okay so this is going to be the sub module 02 we have completed sub module 01 and uh, in this particular sub module or the upcoming ones what i am suggesting you is to whenever you're opening the yaza book for studying there are certain things which you should keep in mind like for example this is the beginning of the chapter where you can see it's written engine performance right so what is the knowledge requirement okay that is given over here that is from 15.2 module what are the things that you should supposed to know fine so from here we can see that you you are supposed to know about gross thrust you should know about net thrust choked nozzle thrust thrust distribution resultant thrust thrust horsepower equivalent shaft horsepower specific fuel consumption fine so these are the things and then you have got engine efficiencies uh, what are the different types of efficiencies that we have uh, that we should keep in mind then you have got bypass ratio engine pressure ratio pressure temperature velocity of the gas flow engine ratings static thrust influence of speed altitude hot and climate flat rating and limitations now all these things will basically give you the brief idea about this particular chapter and also the jet engine okay so whenever you are actually choosing a particular sub module make sure that you please go through the first page of that particular chapter or rather the syllabus you know like you should have an idea why you are studying that particular sub module and what are the things you should know at the end of that sub module okay if let's say somewhere I am just doing it with Yaza. Now, only Yaza cannot do everything for your module 15 preparation. Fine. You need to know about the other books as well. Like 12A also you have to go through. You have to go through some other books like Otis, Crows and Wild. Then you have got Jepson. Okay. For the, some some portions of the propeller needs to go through from some other book. Okay. There are CAP 4, uh, 459 part 1 part 2. So, bit of information from all the all these books will actually fetch a lot of marks and also the passing marks okay only yaza cannot help you definitely but yaza can as i told you in the very first video yaza can help you at least 50 percent of the thing okay means 50 percent of your marks you can definitely get from yaza because nowadays it's directly coming from this book that is the reason this book is very important also it gives you a fair enough idea about what are the things you should know so whenever you find that there is let's say particular word that you are supposed to know from this first page but for example let's consider let's consider specific fuel consumption okay so this is thrust specific fuel consumption i already told told you about thrust specific fuel consumption it is like what is the fuel that you are consuming per unit of thrust okay that is to get one newton thrust let's say how much of fuel you are burning just like that okay that is to get a very unit amount of thrust a particular amount of thrust how much fuel you are burning so specific fuel consumption will basically be if it is more then we know that it is actually bad means to produce uh, a thrust you require a lot of fuel if specific fuel consumption is less which is good means you require less fuel to get a good thrust just like if our mileage is good in a bike we know or in a scooty we know it's a good bike or a good car in the same way it is the same thing over here okay specific fuel consumption now uh, so let, uh, we are considering this particular thing now let's say in this particular chapter when we will go through if there is not enough written about the specific fuel consumption then what you're supposed to do over here is you please go through any particular book or rather i'll suggest you where these things will be good i'm just giving you an example in this particular book these basics are okay but i'm talking about in general about the other chapters as well let's say somewhere uh, uh, about compressor or about uh, turbine or about the maintenance of compressor and turbine if that is not given in a good way in these books then those you have to go through from the other books but at least you can get an idea about what are the things you should go through from this particular book okay so that was the brief about it so in this will be same for all the chapters i will not repeat it in all the chapters again okay so the first page you should read to get an idea about what are the things you should know from that particular chapter okay whether you whether you uh, get it in this book or you get it in some other book doesn't matter but you have to ultimately know that particular thing only then you can pass the exam fine so over here we can see the very first thing talks about turbine engine operating principles okay so what is the basic principle about turbine engine operation let us just quickly go through because there is a question on this 
that the principle used by gas turbine engine as it provides force to move an airplane is based on Newton's laws of momentum we know. Now what is this law? The, this law states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. That is the third law we know. Therefore if the engine accelerates a mass of air, it applies a force on the aircraft. Right? We saw previously also in the other videos where we talked about the three laws. Now third law told what? If a mass of air is pushed with some certain acceleration rearward from the engine then the engine will be pushed forward if if the engine pushes the mass rear then the engine will be pushes forward so as the engine is attached to the aircraft so the aircraft will also go forward right so that is how it is now turbofan generates thrust by giving a relatively slower acceleration to a larger quantity of air and the pure turbojet will do what it will give a larger thrust uh, sorry larger acceleration to a smaller quantity of air now one only thing that you should know from here is or the remarkable point from here is that turbofan will give relatively slower acceleration but a large quantity of air okay it will push a large quantity of air because it is a large engine turbofan that fan will draw a lot of a lot of air but it will push the air with very little acceleration then also the mass will, then also the force will be more because mass is more and we know that force is equal to mass into acceleration so if more mass then more force right so as per the formula of force it is mass into acceleration so if the mass is more then the force is also more right in the same way in turbo jet the opposite thing is happening there the mass is very less okay but the acceleration is very more the acceleration is very very high right so if the acceleration is very high in turbo jet that is the jet of the jet blow of the engine if the acceleration is very high in that then then also you will get a lot of thrust okay then also the force will be more okay so concept is remaining same that is somehow we have to either increase the mass or you have to increase the acceleration to get the thrust okay to get a lot of thrust now in two different engines the principle is different the way of working is different in turbofan more air less thrust uh, sorry less acceleration and in turbojet the opposite less air but more acceleration fine so equally we can say that uh, mm, this is a problem in the turbojet that there is a fuel consumption and noise problem as it is pushing it with very high velocity so generally the sound will be too much from turbojets like the fighter jets we know it causes a lot of sound and the fuel consumption will be very high okay because it is burning all the air that it is compressing but in turbofan all the air is not getting burned because we know that uh, there is something called bypass ratio and 80% of the air is not burned it is it is bypassing the code engine only 20% of the air is burned inside the engine okay okay now okay no more things from here we can just simply mm -mm -mm. fine uh, these are the basic things that uh, nothing to go that much from here okay next we talk about thrust now we know thrust is basically what it is basically a force right it is basically a force with which the aircraft is moved forward it is a forward force basically so how do you find out the value of thrust it is the mass of air okay see the formula is given over here the mass of the substance or the mass of the jet okay into into what you have is final velocity minus initial velocity by g g is acceleration due to gravity so that's how you find out the formula see all the nomenclatures are given here also but like what is f what is uh, ms what is v1 v2 v2 minus v1 is the change in velocity what is g okay and the values are also given for all the all of these now that is how you find out the formula of thrust okay now coming to breton cycle I already told you previously also about which cycle this particular thing actually follows. It follows Breton cycle. Now what is Breton cycle? Breton cycle is a particular thermodynamic cycle. Okay. Breton cycle is a particular thermodynamic cycle in which what happens? It is, uh, you can say it is a constant pressure cycle also. Okay. If somebody asks you what is, a, what is the jet engine thermodynamic cycle? It is a constant pressure cycle. Now why constant pressure cycle? Because at a particular event at a particular condition that is continuous combustion when the combustion takes place in piston engine, combustion takes place with at a constant volume okay and in 
uh, jet engine combustion will take takes place at a constant combustion will take place at a constant pressure fine so when the combustion is taking place in the combustion chamber so then what is the condition of the air then what is the condition of the gas that is what we are supposed to know that is what we are, we should talk about over here or the working fluid working fluid means the air over here the air that is actually working inside the because air is only getting compressed it is only getting burned it is only getting exhausted right that is only doing everything for us so we are interested to know about the air only so what is the condition of the air the air is at constant pressure when it is getting burned that is what the logic is all about fine so when it the combustion is taking place what is the condition it is at constant pressure so brillouin cycle is a constant pressure cycle so this is a general question in dgca now fine uh, instead of going through this i will better mm, okay I will just show you that what are the steps of Brayton cycle is from this particular stage. See, in the very first one, in the first stage we have got an induction, then we have got a compression, then combustion, and then exhaust, right? So what is induction? Induction is basically when the air is getting inducted, means air is coming in. Okay. After that, air is getting compressed, right? After that, air is getting burnt. okay and then finally it is expanding right expanding means it is going out like this okay so that is the exhaust stage now these are the four stages or four processes of a cycle a cycle consists of processes so induction is a process compression is a process combustion is a process and exhaust is a process now in compression we are doing some work on the air that is we are doing some work on it and it is getting compressed we are supplying some work how we are supplying that work we are supplying through the rotation of the shaft right we are rotating the compressor through the shaft now who is rotating the shaft i am or you are not rotating it there is a separate turbine right no motor nothing there is a separate turbine which is directly connected to the compressor and this same turbine is rotating while the gases are flowing over it combustible gases or the exhaust gases are flowing over it the turbine is rotating and that turbine as it is connected to the same shaft it is rotating the compressor fine so more air is being drawn from the forward section then it is compressed after compression what we are doing we are adding fuel to it right we are adding fuel and we know fuel is having what potential energy we read in the first chapter so potential energy when added uh, that potential energy when it will mix with the air uh the fuel and air that will make a air fuel mixture and then when it is burnt okay then when it is burnt it will produce a lot of heat it will produce a lot of heat that heat will be or that hot gases will try to go you know like uh, move immediately they will they will cause a huge haphazard motion inside the combustion chamber due to that huge uh, liberation of heat or uh, you know release of heat so finally where they will go they cannot come back obviously so they will go in this direction only so where they will go they will basically go towards the turbine stage towards the turbine and through the turbine when they will be moving no the turbine blades are like this turbine blades are like this like aerofoils aerofoil shapes so when the hot gases will move like this through the turbine blades they will rotate the blade in this direction all the blades will be rotating in a particular direction so then the blade will start rotating okay then the blade will start rotating once the blade starts rotating then one by one all the series of blades that it has 2 3 4 5 whatever it is they all will start rotating and then finally that rotation will be again forwarded to the through that shaft it will come to the compressor section again the compressor will rotate again air will come in okay so in that way the cycle will again continue like this so that is the reason it is called as a cycle which means it rotates continuously it is rotating later on i will discuss about this particular thing in a better chapter in, in great detail but to just to complete this sub module i'll tell you there is nothing much in this just go through line by line few things are important obviously the ones that i've told you and the ones that is there in the first page okay that is this page this terminology is wherever you get whether you get in this chapter that is good if you don't get it 
you can even google it you can go through other books wherever you are getting these terminologies these things you have to know at least what it is and how it actually works that is what you are supposed to know okay okay few of the things we have already discussed here and there is nothing much as such okay few things they have given i guess uh this particular page is important where they are talking about Bernoulli's principle that is whenever there is a stream of any fluid that has its velocity increase at a point then the pressure of that stream will be going down and we have already talked about this right in the first chapter uh, that is Bernoulli's principle is giving us in, in short sentence if I say it is showing us that if speed increases then pressure will decrease if pressure increases then speed will decrease okay it is vice versa speed and pressure they are opposite to each other if speed increases then pressure will decrease and if speed decreases then pressure will increase that is what is Bernoulli's theorem is Bernoulli's theorem right now from that situation we can say that when there is a convergent duct convergent duct means if the engine exhaust let's say engine is pulling air like this okay which means what it is converging now if the duct of the engine is diverging like this that means what area is increasing area increasing so pressure is increasing if pressure increases that we know that means what will happen speed will decrease right so that is the reason the final duct of the engine is convergent like this turbines are turbines will be expanding only turbines the area will slowly increase in turbines and the area will slowly decrease in compressor fine in compressor the area will decrease and in turbine the area will increase but if the area increases the jet velocity will go down so that will not give us a lot of thrust so in order to increase that what we have to do is we have to make a conical exhaust cone you must have seen in every engine it is there why it is conical this is the same reason fine this is the same reason for which it is convergent convergent duct will do what it will decrease the increase the velocity increase the velocity and it will decrease the pressure okay and in divergent duct the opposite thing will happen the velocity will decrease and the pressure will increase increase because the area is increasing so they depend on the area only okay so if i give you an idea about if area is going down speed increases that that means it is becoming converging it is converging in nature if it is diverging diverging means area will be high speed will be sorry 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 if the area decreases then the speed sorry extremely sorry when the speed increases in divergent what will happen area will increase speed will decrease pressure will increase here pressure will decrease which means area decreases pressure decreases but speed increases area increases pressure increases but speed decreases fine so that is about diverging and converging you can take a screenshot if you want to uh, now we will talk about the exhaust nozzle is a convergent velocity now fine that's great now this means that the highest efficiency has been obtained for the in the engine for subsonic flight okay now in case of subsonic there is a one thing and in case of supersonic that is anything above the speed of sound flying above the speed of sound for them it is a different concept and for the subsonic flights that generally it is in civil aviation the aircraft that we deal with okay that is having a different concept okay so i'll tell you what it is see if it is supersonic if it is supersonic then converging section will uh, in converging section speed will decrease and uh, in diverging section speed will increase it is just the opposite of subsonic and in subsonic what will happen subsonic the opposite thing will happen this is supersonic okay supersonic ss and in subsonic what will happen the one that we deal with convergence section the speed will increase and in divergence section the speed will decrease right the speed will decrease so it is just the opposite thing so any aircraft that is flying more than the speed of sound that is Mach 1 and above like the fighter aircrafts 
so you will find generally the fighter aircrafts just go and google it you will understand the fighter aircrafts will have exhaust cones divergent like this okay why they have a divergent section like this it is because in subsonic uh, sorry in supersonic we know divergent section increases the speed okay that is the reason they have a divergent cone but in all civil aircrafts and engines you will find they have a convergent cone like this because convergent cone will do what convergent cone will increase the speed in case of subsonic in case of subsonic in subsonic in convergent section will increase the speed which is just the opposite of uh, supersonic case okay so that's all about it not going more deep into this particular thing you just go through you will understand see this is the particular shape of an engine and uh, what exactly where is the uh, what th amount of thrust, it pro thrust is produced what amount of uh, forward and rear rearward forces are produced and all these things will be there I'll just go through this in the next particular uh, thing and uh, if possible I'll make you understand with all the you know diagrams and everything I am I'm actually trying to find it out I'm getting very less time uh, but I'll, I'll definitely do it okay I'll definitely do it